Hey, this is Frank Yost another edition of the Wheel Estate Cam with Inman. This time we're going to actually uh, take a little kayak ride. It is in Washington, D.C. It's been like the hottest summer in like 82 years or something, and today it's approaching 100 degrees, so couldn't get lo be locked up in the car once again. Let's head out. Um, if you saw how this thing was attached, you'd uh, appreciate the level of shakiness because it's actually between my toes. So let's see how this goes. So today I want to talk about failure. I went to a presentation by uh, Seth Godin yesterday, and it's amazing how he'll have a two or three hour seminar and people will get things completely, get take away a completely different message. And the message that I took away, the one that was most resounding to me, was that if you haven't failed, you haven't tried hard enough. Um, and I kind of remember that philosophy back when I used to do uh, rock climbing. Oh, i got to get a video, whoa, an Inman video while rock climbing. I have to put that on the list. And, you know, I have a friend that said, oh, yeah, I, I never fall. You know, I, I like going out there and uh, challenging myself, but I never fall. I'm just like, you never fall? That means you haven't tried hard enough. And I'm not talking about, like, when you're when you get older and you just want to go out and have a good time and you don't need to push yourself and you're just having a good time, like skiing, sometimes people won't fall. But if someone, you know, saying that they're pushing themselves and they haven't fallen, they haven't tried hard enough. So that relates directly to uh, to real estate. You have to, you have to, you know, innovation is trying something that is, you know, completely out there um, and and completely going for it. So I mean, find that that one neighborhood that is, you know, three price brackets above the one that you've been working on and say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take over this neighborhood. And, I mean, don't do the, the easy approach, just throwing a whole bunch of money at it, you know, sending a whole bunch of recipes and, and just direct mail campaigns that are done by somebody else. Try actually doing some effort, make a specific blog about that neighborhood, make, uh, get a URL, a domain name, right around that neighborhood make a Twitter account just for that neighborhood. Um, I'm doing that right now for, if you want to see, you know, my work in progress of a community that I, I'm trying to take over, and that is Lake Barcroft. Put up a YouTube feed, and um, my goal is to just you know shoot for the stars and try to take over this take over this this neighborhood. It's not going to be easy because there's been people here have been working here for 40 years, whatnot. But if you don't shoot for the stars, you're never going to never going to get anywhere. And even if it doesn't work out, you know, fine. At least you at least you tried. But I really think you, you need to you need to take that the, the other video that I talked about where you have to only work at 180 percent capacity. So that you have, um, so that you have this time to do what I'm talking about. This 20%, because people say, "Oh, I don't have time." Well, if you don't have time, you don't have time to innovate. You don't have time to expand. You don't have time to to double or triple your salary. So, you know, put in or take to your clients and use that time to try to go after these, you know, bigger marketplaces, or you know, build that bigger website, newer website, and be prepared to fail. Uh, another example of my failure is on my site, Frankly MLS. I said, you know, I want to have a forum where consumers can talk back and forth, spend a whole bunch of money, three or four months building the forum, and it's been up now for three or four months. I don't think there's been one post. Not one post. Um, I'm not giving up on that yet. I think I've just got to... The problem there was that the solution that I wanted to do was just throw a whole bunch of money at it and just let it work. I don't want to think about it. I want to spend hours and hours debating how I can integrate and make it, make it something. Um, so yeah, you've got to take the, the hard route. Spend a lot of energy, spend a lot of time, and you know, do it right. So currently, that is in my failure category, and hopefully, that will uh, come out of that category and and be you know be successful. So, what what is the biggest failure you've done? Um, I'm getting a lot of emails from you guys directly. Don't be shy. Post it on. Uh, post your questions and comments on on Inman's uh, comment section. Love to hear about your failure and managers out there. Rather than rewarding those that have succeeded, how about rewarding someone who's failed? How about rewarding someone who's who's done something different, didn't quite work out, but you know what? That was just 
that was a really good idea that, that they should have done. Um, one last example that Seth gave was uh, he had one employee that periodically would, you know, innovate and do really neat things. And then for two months straight or something like that, the, the guy hadn't made one mistake. So he, he, brings, he brings the employee in and he says, have you, uh, you haven't made any mistakes in the last couple of months? And the guy said confidently, that's right, that's right, I, I, I haven't. And then he said, well, if you don't make a mistake in the next 30 days, you're fired. Um, something to that effect. And the point was that the guy stopped innovating. He stopped taking that 10, 20% of his time and, and going for that thing that's three to four times larger than himself. And, uh, and then you just you, you turn into companies like AOL that had the whole lead, and then they got, just got complacent, and they got eaten alive. So make sure as a, as a manager that you're, that you're rewarding innovation highlighting people that are trying to try new things and are really pushing that as opposed to just pushing the straight sales numbers. The straight sales numbers is a short-term approach. The uh, rewarding failure is a, is a long-term, uh, long-term strategy of, not long-term strategy, failing, but long-term term strategy of just making your, your business really skyrocket. All right, thanks a lot. This is uh, Frank Yosa again. If you like what you're hearing, also tweet it. Retweet it on, uh, on Twitter, obviously, as opposed to somewhere else. And post it on Facebook. Share it around. And I appreciate it. My uh, Twitter is uh, at Frankly Realty. And you can follow me also on my blog, blog.franklyrealty.com. And that site, again, is lakebarcroft.com. All right, ciao.